charge admission. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our regular council meeting for May 2nd, 2022. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge that the traditional territories and the oral practices of the Blackfoot Nation, which include the Siksika, the Kainai, and the Pakani. We also acknowledge the Statina, the Stony Nakoda First Nations, the Métis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. We are making this acknowledgement to demonstrate our continuing efforts to work together as we strive for reconciliation through increased and collective learning. Okay, we have a staff introduction here, uh, Richard Mack. Thank you. So today we have here Eric Olson. Uh, Eric Olson was originally our uh, Parks and Recreation Operator. Uh, he left the city in 2021, but uh, he missed us too much. So uh, we're happy to say that he's uh, well joined us again on uh, April 18th as our Recreation Operator 1. So welcome back, Eric. Thank you. Yeah, okay, yeah, welcome, uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. welcome back to the city there, yeah. <laughs> And as I mentioned before, you're welcome to stay, but I know you're a busy guy making sure that ice is all right at the arena for the Bandits games there, so we'll let you go. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, moved by Councillor Nesbitt that the agenda be adopted. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Prentice that the minutes from the regular council meeting held April 18th, 2022 be approved. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Wardrop that the Eco Brooks committee presentation request to expand the committee be accepted as information. And we have a guest here today, Emrys Oliver, the youth member. Welcome back to council there. We had. Uh, was it a visit last fall or something where you took, or when was that? I think it was a while ago. I spoke at the Pride event. I know that, but I don't oh, know. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. Okay. But it has been a while. So, hello, I'm Emrys Oliver. I'm here on behalf of the Eco Books Committee. Um, and we had a slideshow presentation, but I'm not sure if it will be posted up. So, our request is, we would like the City of Brooks to consider expanding the Eco Brooks Committee and focus area to include the County of Newell. If this is approved by city council, approach the county of Newell to join the committee. We propose that there be equitable financial commitments that suit both parties. I will go into more detail about how this will uh, benefit both parties later. Maybe it'll catch up. Suggested committee model. We suggest that, the, that we model the committee after the highly successful Brooks and County of Newell Safe Communities Committee with equitable or equal financial contributions from both city and county. I didn't read it exactly, but you know what, it works out anyways. Eco Brooks mandate. The mandate of the Environmental Advisory Committee is to explore policies, programs, <laughs> and procedures which would lead to the long and short-term enhancement, preservation, and protection of the environment in both local and global contexts. I would like to note that it does say global context as well. Eco Brooks focus areas. 
water conservation. Even something as essential to life as water comes from outside of our city. What people do outside of Brooks affects our groundwater and drinking water. Water conservation is a group effort, and getting more people involved with different perspectives helps everyone. Energy sustainability. People in the country may not be aware that there are ways that they can use alternative energy and resources they have for it. Ma waste management. Our waste and recycling are dealt with outside of our city. Both the recycling depot and the dump are outside of city limits. There are also plants that people plant on their properties that they don't realize are invasive and can cause a massive impact on the local environment. What people plant outside of city limits affects our ecosystem as well. Benefits of combined city and eco committee. Great awareness of environmental issues affecting the area, receive input from everyone, and potentially increase services for resources for all residents. Benefits to the city brooks. More members with different skills and connections, greater number of committee members who help with various initiatives, and additional knowledge of what's happening in our surrounding communities. Because with the environmental impact, getting everybody to have the same knowledge is very, very helpful. Benefits to the county of Newell. An already established committee of hardworking people, access to more resources for education, community, and business, and a greater connection to the city of Brooks for their environmental initiatives. Revised committee composition. So these are just some suggestions of what it might look like, but it could also look very different. Two to four residents from the county of Newell, equal number of residents from the city of Brooks and county of Newell, one city councilor, one county councilor, and open applications to all city and county residents. So like I said, these are just suggestions, but we propose that all members who are already a part of the EcoBrooks committee maintain their positions, just because we already have a team that works very well together. And any questions? Uh, any questions? Uh, uh, Council, good enough. I believe, don't you currently have one a county, res a county councilor? No, two? we do not. No? Do, just is, is that an option, though? Wasn't it an option in the past? In the bylaws, it says that it can only be city residents. So currently, we are not allowed to have anybody but people in the city okay. who reside in the city. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Alan, how do we go about that? Uh, I guess we would have to ask the county and know if they want to be part of that. Yes, that was yes. part of what we were assuming we would have to do. So first, um, approach you lovely people. And then if it's approved, approach the county of Newell, see if they also agree, and then kind of get everybody to work together to see what would work best for everyone. Okay. Yes, uh, through the chair to mayor and council, I would agree the next step would be, if council agrees to look at this, that we would, if your group could make a presentation at the joint services committee meeting. Uh, that. Joint services includes the county of Newell, but also the villages of Rose, Rosemary and Duchess and town of Asano. So I would suggest that that be the next step. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you had a, a question, Councillor Woodrop. Yeah. Mike doesn't want to work with you. Technical difficulties. Oh, look at that. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, maybe we, we, might, we, we might have designed that on purpose. Yeah, just, <laughs> great question for you. Um, so I was curious, um, if, if, where this is going to be um, appealing for the county, what kind of um, potential policies or initiatives that you see working out in Brooks would also work in the communities in the county of Newell? Because obviously they're really different from the yeah. city of Brooks. That's a great question. Um, we already had one person ask about an initiative in Brooks. That's what inspired us to start looking into expanding it. Um, mainly we see local businesses in the county of Newell who ask for support in being more environmentally friendly, whether that be a composter or support in doing some sort of garden for the community. Okay. Yeah. And then also just having the expanded reach and not um, not being limited to the city of Brooks when we are educating people and just spreading awareness about issues. Great, cool. Can I also just uh, rally something back to you? Because you also emphasize global when you mm -hmm. talked about um, potential, I guess, policies, right, that we see that global awareness happening. Um, could you expand on that a little bit for me? Uh, yes, so currently 
I will admit some of the members of the committee were surprised themselves that we had global in our initiative. Um, but I will say a big part of sustainability is awareness and education. Because if you don't know something, you don't know something. And if you don't even know that something's an issue, how can you do anything about it? So um, I think a big part of that is just spreading awareness, being a priority for this committee, and making sure that we are in alignment with the world as a whole in what we're doing to do what we can. Great. Well, thank you for being such great ambassadors for the environment and educators for our community. Thanks, Emrys. Thank you. Councilor Jessica. Yeah, if I can just, I'm on that committee. And, uh, you know, some of the initiatives that have been lo done locally that could certainly apply outside of uh, Brooks itself would be, uh, uh, there was a money uh, granted to a student who prepared a presentation for uh, the lower uh, school levels on environmental issues. Um, we're planning uh, an art competition within the school system of Brooks to increase awareness. And these are things that would lend themselves very easily to schools throughout the county. Okay. Any other questions? Um, would um, the next joint services meeting is May 10th. Uh, would they be able to get on that agenda there or go ahead, Alan? For sure, I believe we could get them on for May 10th, next Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. and the, the, the meetings go from one to three in the afternoon and that would be possible for you then? And then Jenny will hook you up then uh, with the time. So. Yeah, and, and that way, as uh, Alan says, we have the county in Newell and we have the uh, three other municipalities in the region, which would be perfect for you too then. So, okay, so, okay. Okay, um, thank you for your time this afternoon, yeah. Thank you, okay. Councillors. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back to the uh, motion then, uh, moved by Councillor Wardrop, that the Eco Brooks committee presentation request to expand the committee be accepted as information. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, moved by Councillor Good enough that the following items of correspondence be received as information updates on Council conferences and workshops, Council committee reports for Councillor Idris, Councillor Good enough, Councillor Prentice, the accounts payable listing, the notes from the Council committee from April 26, 2022, and report to Council on the COVID 19 update. And we'll start with uh, Council conferences and workshops or any committee reports. We'll start with uh, Councillor Nesbitt to the right. Anything? I know I just I was wondering if you had anything from uh, workshops or whatever yeah yeah no nothing okay okay Councillor Prentice oh the mic there Bill I'm gonna hear this anyway <laughs> you're on yeah <laughs> tenders were sent out for the new regional landfill to to uh, build a new cell and also the tenders were to uh, put in a, a pad for the back trucks as well in the tender. And <clears throat> there was uh, tenders, seven tenders were sent out and uh, for that project, including for all the work and the pads. The lowest tender is uh, White Fox Group, they're out of, Meta, they're out of Redcliffe actually. And their tender was for 3,407,900 or whatever. And uh, met all the specs and tender specs, they, start the work likely today, I think. <clears throat> and there was a big difference in all the tenders. Uh, there was uh, three million between the highest and the lowest bid in that contract. So it was looked over very closely, but there were some people, I guess, weren't very interested in doing the work or looking for big dollars. So that will be started and it'll take a two or three months to finish and pretty big project as well as the leachate is on the way being fixed up too. So. Pretty big project, over four million dollars this year. So that's about it. Okay, thank you, Councillor uh, Prentice. Okay, Councillor Idris. In all the way from Saudi Arabia. Nothing. How's how's the temperature over there this afternoon? It is actually it's not afternoon. It's one forty-two now a.m. and it is uh, third and it is thirty. Oh, not bad. For one for one forty two, that's bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Go go ahead. So I don't have anything for workshops. Do you want me to do the committees now or? Yeah, do, do the committee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so um, BRZ, one of my committees, uh, we had an AGM. I think uh, a month and a half, two months ago, in February, I believe, and um, we had actually some new members join the the board. So there is an interest in 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 joining the board, and that was. Uh, 
refreshing. Um, for a while, I think it has been the same people. Uh, and then um, the, we are working on a new social media strategy. Um, the focus in the past was mainly on Facebook. So, um, and we are going into Instagram. There is there is a uh, belief in the business community that uh, Instagram is the way to go now. So they are, they are working on that. We have a couple um, young uh, business owners that joined the, 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 the we, we formed a subcommittee uh, to work on that uh, going forward. Uh, two issues actually that uh, the group wanted me to bring to council and maybe uh, we, will, we will see how we can work on that is uh, some talks around the terminus and um, you know, I, I think it has been some time since since the committee or, or the BRZ in the city talked about what is the vision there. Um, some business owners are thinking about is is the vision we have now the right vision and things like that. Um, and so with with us putting it on our strategic planning uh, process and adding it to our uh, priorities, they thought they maybe it's a good time now to talk about. What are we envisioning there? Are we just doing something that will make it good for the people around there, or is it something that's impacted actually the whole BRZ um, rather than just that that end of that street? Uh, another 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 area that they wanted me to bring again forward to the to the city and and, and talk about is the idea of you know the process of the tax collection and. Uh, for example, some people who don't pay, and, and is there any any enforcing mechanism? Uh, uh, you know, there is that fifteen thousand number that we put there. Uh, is there anything that we can do to, to to talk to those businesses? Is there anything that the city can do to uh, look into different ways to enforce uh, that collection for some businesses that may not pay? Anyhow, some conversations around that tax collection process for uh, for the BRZ. Uh, so on. Um, then I'm going to go to the Safe Communities Committee. Um, there was a shout out earlier uh, in, the, in the presentation from the delegation. Um, um, it's, 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 it's a wonderful community. There is a lot of work going on. Um, the, the Safe Community Coordinator is, uh, is engaged locally, provincially, and even further. I think, I think uh, next month they are speaking in a conference in, uh, in, in Whistler uh, around Committee policing and, and some of the work that's being done here. Um, we had a new member join the the, the committee. Um, I think I think council approved that I think a couple of meetings ago. Um, we are actually looking into some sort of a strategic planning process again. Um, I we were thinking about do we need a facilitator? And in, in, in Lisa, Lisa's name came up as, as an excellent facilitator. So maybe you will hear something, Lisa. Um, and, and we are thinking about doing that, um, I think, next month, I believe, uh, or the month after that. I should have to, have to remember. Um, then tourism. Um, the, the what, One of the big things that we have done recently is actually our, our new cycle of the grants started, um, and we have received already three applications and with that with that rate we may, maybe we will finish our many actually even sooner than the end of the year so we have actually approved three applications for for um, grants to tourism uh terms of good applications some local some actually uh, people who are doing things locally, but maybe they're not they're not local. Uh, and then uh, there's a lot of activities going on during the spring, summer, and, and, and we are putting that out and we are encouraging people to come out and, and, and um, participate in these activities. The rodeo is coming up and then a lot of activities during the summer. Uh, shared services. Um, what, the thing I like about the church services is the, is the excellent presentations, interesting presentations that we receive every time we go to this uh, this uh, this committee. Um, we heard from uh, Red Bull, um, the, the drink, and, and they are doing a big a big event um, soon in, in our in our area. Uh, uh, look out for for announcements soon, I believe, and in, in, in uh, we think it would, it would bring a lot of uh, attention to our community. They have uh, they have a huge social media um, presence and in, in, even even beyond social media, traditional media. Uh, that that our names, the city of Brooks County, uh, all the different communities in our region will be featured uh, uh, there in that event and will be supporters of the event. Uh, uh, but, a lot, a lot of talk around the hydrogen projects in the, in the, in the area and in, in some of the potentials and some of the things that could happen. Um, there are a lot of opportunities to be to be actually uh, a main player in, in, in that in that field in our area. 
uh, the other big project that's going on is, is the pathway um, the, to Kimbrook Island. Um, we hear about money coming and, and donations coming, and uh, and I think uh, it would be it would be an excellent addition to our um, area. And uh, finally, intermunicipal development again, no meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Idris. Any questions on that? Okay, I'll move on to Councillor Goodenough. All right, well, uh, just a few updates. Um, thank you, Councillor Idris, for talking about uh, joint services. And so I won't reiterate any of those things, but just we continue to work together with the county, uh, Bazano, Duchess, and Rosemary, and uh, the surrounding communities. Um, one of the things that I've been tasked with lately is uh, Silver Sage. And we're really proud uh, to say that the rodeo is back on. Uh, we're rebranding it with the name uh, Newell, Pro, or Neil, Newell Pro Rodeo. And so uh, we think it's going to be, you know, it's just going to be a good event. And uh, I, I know from the county side and the city side, we look forward to working with the new board and moving the projects uh, forward. And we think a good, uh, they're going to have a good future. There's a good team in place. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to, to being a part of that. Uh, joint services, again, is, is going good. Uh, community futures, we haven't had any meetings for the last two weeks, just nothing really on our agendas. Uh, so we look forward to that next month. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, we have the trade show coming up May 13th to 15th. Uh, there's going to be the VIP fashion show, uh, the beer gardens, and of course, uh, approximately about 70 to, to 100 uh, trade show booths, you know, and so um, we think that it's a worth of, a worthy event uh, for our community and for the surrounding area. There's going to be lots of good little attractions to be a part of that. Um, audit committee, we uh, finished up, and just again, thanks to Shelley and the team for doing such an amazing job, and I think we did, we passed all the, all the good stuff, so smooth sailing <laughs> from here. And uh, sign committee, we're meeting next week, and I'll report on that in my next uh, time up. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Councillor Goodenough. Okay, Councillor Woodrop, anything? Just, uh, yeah, no, okay. Any workshops or anything you attended? You don't have to do your committee reports today. No, no, no. No, 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 okay. Councilor Jessica. Nothing to report. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Councilor Jessica, Eddie, yeah. No workshops to report on. Uh, just outside the normal uh, committee meetings for um, Communities in Bloom have been working with the city on the transition for management of uh, flower beds and uh, some other projects uh, like bird houses. And uh, Eco Brooks has been putting a lot of time and effort into preparing for the trade show and also having meetings and uh, promoting the edible garden, planning and promoting the edible garden. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jessica. Just a couple things here. I, can I, can I add one more? Re oh, sorry. Um, can I just add one more thing oh, about, yeah, yeah. about, oh, yeah. about yeah. shared services? Um, an interesting discussion going on around branding and economic development. And um, the, the, the county felt that uh, the branding focuses more on, on, on the city of Brooks. Uh, and, and I believe we are now going to go into um, another exercise of free branding. Um, although we have done that, it just very recently, I believe, maybe yeah, last year or the year before, I believe, I don't know, sorry, before my time. But uh, but anyhow, we are going through um, a new rebranding uh, for the economic development region uh, that we belong to. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, though, I thought, um, I don't think we're going into another branding exercise. I thought we were just going to add the name Newell, it'd be uh, the Brooks Newell region. Uh, and Alan, is that kind of what we decided, how we came to the uh, final conclusion on that? Yeah, through the chair to mayor and council at our last joint services committee meeting, they uh, said yes to go in that direction by adding it to Brooks Newell region. So uh, hopefully not a whole lot of change to it yeah. once we get through it. But. Thank you, Councillor Idris there, yeah. yeah I just want to want, uh, mention too that um, I want to report that the RCMP are continuing their investigation into the uh, graffiti vandalism around the community. They are taking it seriously. And again, they ask if you see anything or witness anything, call the RCMP as with everybody, we want this to come to an end here too. Uh, one other note here too, uh, we lost another uh, person due to COVID there. So our condolences to the family on that there too. So. Okay, to the motion, all those in favor? Carried. 
a move by uh, Councillor Idris that the week of May 1st to the 7th, 2022 be hereby proclaimed as National Emergency Preparedness Week in the City of Brooks. Kevin. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, through the Council. The City of Brooks Fire Department intends to promote National Emergency Preparedness Week, which is an annual campaign that encourages citizens to be prepared to cope with a range of emergencies and disasters anytime, anywhere. This year's theme for emergency preparedness is be ready for anything. The campaign aims to educate people about the importance of emergency planning, why every family should be prepared to survive for 72 hours during an emergency, and the simple things that anyone can do to ensure that they are prepared. Nationally, Emergency Preparedness Week is coordinated by Public Safety Canada and provincially it is headed by the Alberta Emergency Management Agency. This year, National Emergency Preparedness Week will be held May 1st through 7th. Through uh, proclamation, public awareness will be amplified as to the importance of being prepared in advance for an emergency. Information material about emergency preparedness can be accessed by the public on the city's website. The recommendation that the week of May 1st through 7th, 2022 be proclaimed as National Emergency Preparedness Week in the City of Brooks. If there's any questions, I'd be pleased to answer them. Any questions? Um, I recall we, uh, when we first uh, were part of council, we took a session over at the fire hall there. I thought it was very valuable there. So my goal was that we're, we don't have any uh, emergencies during my four-year term here. Eh? <laughs> but at the other end, though, I think uh, we think we're often immune from emergencies in this area here. We do get the odd tornado. I can't ever recall one happening. But a good incident was the fire that happened uh, last, uh, was it the fall or the summer? But I mean, if the wind would have changed direction, it could have had a major impact on the city of Brooks there too. Yeah, that's one incident. And uh, the other ones that we do come across are um, the uh, snowstorms in the winter time and those do affect us there too. But it's interesting. I don't know if enough people are sort of prepared for 72 hours. You know, uh, once in a while the power goes off at home and we panic when it's off for about three or four hours there. People don't even have candles or anything ready or yeah, and they want to plug in their phones for charges and there's no electricity either there. So, yeah, so I, I think it's good that we bring awareness to the community on this one here. Okay, to the motion, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you, Kevin. Moved by Councillor Jessica that May 10th, 2022 be hereby proclaimed as the Day of Action Against Asian Racism in the City of Brooks. Richard? Thank you. Through the Chair to Mayor and Council, there has been a recent surge of anti-Asian racism in our Canadian cities. According to Stats Canada, police reported hate crimes against East and Southeast Asians have recently increased, which coincides with the COVID-19 pandemic. The City of Brooks values the diversity of its residents and staff and is committed to providing high-quality services, inclusive facilities and programs in creating an overall diversity-friendly, welcoming, inclusive community. The City has a Welcome Inclusive Committee, or WIC for short, which strives to create a welcoming, inclusive municipality in which all residents can feel included and fully able to participate in their community. The city is a signator, signatory of UNESCO's Coalition of, of Inclusive Municipalities, or SIM for short, short, which helps broaden and strengthen our ability to protect and promote human rights through coordination and shared responsibility. The City of Brooks also created the WIC Partnership Plan, which promotes diversity throughout the City of Brooks, workplace, and community as a whole. We must condemn all forms of hate in public spaces as it creates unsafe conditions for members of the Asian, Black, Indigenous, people of color, and racialized communities. Therefore, administration is recommending that May 10th, 2022 be hereby proclaimed as a day of action against Asian racism in the City of Brooks. Okay, any questions? Okay, to the motion. Oh, sorry, Marissa. Yeah, Councillor uh, Wardrop. So, uh, so the partnership plan is that the action that we're that we're proclaiming the pro the day of uh, or proclamation of action. It sounds like we're you know something actionable is going to happen. Is that what is that what's going on there, Richard? Through the chair to mayor. Or sorry, <laughs> not, no, not oh, yet. <laughs> <laughs> next, next term, maybe. <laughs> you got promoted today. Uh, no. Uh, so the WIC. Pro program is actually a part of the plan that we have for this day. Uh, so it's a four-year plan that uh, 
just talks about different initiatives that we have, including uh, advertising throughout different communities, uh, working with the youth group, um, and uh, having different events throughout the year as well. Okay. And are we going to see some of those specific things coming to fruition? Like, uh, like you said, like, a, like the things going to the youth group, or um, I'm just, I was curious to see what specific Yes, uh, through the chair, through a councillor Mordrop. Um, there is a WIC um, uh, plan that I could email it to you, but within that plan, it's, it's, uh, we have specific timelines for the four years that uh, is, um, can move around within the four years depending on what's, what's happening. But for example, um, I am jo uh, joining as a mentor for uh, um, uh, Global Village's uh, School for Youth Mentorship Program. And uh, we have started to, uh, to uh, advertise our job vacancies throughout different organizations in the city, such as BCALC and YMCA. So those are just some of the initiatives that we take part in. Thanks. I was just really looking forward to seeing what's going to be happening. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. To the motion. All those in favor? Carried. Uh, moved by Councillor Wardrop that Council formally approve the proposed Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board grant, the ACHBG process documents. Uh, Natasha. Thank you. Through the chair to Mayor and Council, uh, the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board was formed in December 2016, and the board's mandate is to act as an advisory board to Council and to the city in providing opportunities for arts, culture, and heritage programs and facilities in the city of Brooks. In December 2021, City Council allocated $10,000 for the 2022 fiscal year to the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board to distribute as grant funding towards local community events, programs, and initiatives. As a result, the Board has developed the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board grant, ACHBG, process to award grant funding to individuals and groups in the City of Brooks who intend to deliver arts, culture, and heritage opportunities within the City's municipal boundaries. Please note that as per Schedule A uh, in your guys' attachment for the grant documents, the board shall meet annually to review the funding process and application templates and with any revisions to the Arts, Culture and Heritage Board grant process will be presented to Council as needed. Therefore, the Arts, Culture and Heritage Board would like to forward to City Council the following motion made during the April 5th, 2022 Arts, Culture and Heritage Board meeting. In addition, please note that the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board grant process and documents were discussed and reviewed by the board during this meeting. It was moved by T. T. Wardrop and seconded by R. Massey that the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board grant process documents be accepted as amended. Therefore, the recommendation is that Council formally approve the proposed Arts, Culture, and Heritage Board grant process documents. Okay, any questions? Um, I'm excited about this. I'm interested to see how it plays out there. And I want to thank you for the work you put into that there too, because uh, when you start a new program, there is a lot of work on that there too, and to the committee itself there too. So thank you very much. Okay, to the motion, all those in favor? <laughs> but Joel did vote in favor of this. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Natasha, yeah. Moved by Councillor Good enough that uh, Bjornda Bjornsson be appointed to the City of Brooks Public Library Board for a first three-year term beginning May 3rd, 2022 and ending May 2nd, 2025. Did I get the first name right? <laughs> Through the Chair to Mayor and Council, the City of Brooks Public Library Board has reviewed an application for a member at large position and they are recommending that Bjornda Bjornsson be appointed. Ms. Bjornsson previously served two terms on the library board and is interested in being appointed again. Therefore, administration is recommending that Bjornda Bjornsson be appointed to the City of Brooks Public Library Board for a first three-year term beginning May 3rd, 2022 and ending May 2nd, 2025. Okay, any questions? To the motion, all those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Idris that Rudy Esau be reappointed to the City of Brooks Environmental Advisory Committee as a citizen at large for a second three-year term, commencing May 7th, 2022, and ending May 6th, 2025. Amy. Thank you. Through the Chair to Mayor and Council, Rudy Esau's appointment on the Environmental Advisory Committee, or Eco Brooks, expires on May 6th. 
He is interested in serving another three-year term on the committee, and the committee is recommending that he be reappointed as a citizen at large. Therefore, administration is recommending that Rudy Usau be appoint, reappointed to the City of Brooks Environmental Advisory Committee as a citizen at large for a second three-year term, commencing May 7, 2022, and ending May 6, 2025. Okay, any questions? To the motion, all those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor, moved by Councillor Jessica that the council reappoint Malena Sticka to the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board for a second one-year term commencing May 4th, 2022 and ending May 3rd, 2023. Randy? Through the chair to mayor and council, the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board is comprised of members of city council, county council, school board representatives, and city and county citizens at large. The mandates to determine future direction and development of recreation and parks facilities, events, and programs. Melena Sticka will complete her first one-year term as the youth citizen at large on the board tomorrow, May 3rd, and at the board meeting held on April 20th expressed interest in remaining on the board. Therefore, the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board would like to forward to City Council the following motion for youth citizen at large. John Nesbitt made a motion to recommend Melena Sticka for a second one-year term on the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board for the City of Brooks Council. Dwayne Perkins seconded the motion and the motion was carried. Therefore, the recommendation is that Council reappoint Melena Sticka to the Brooks and District Recreation and Parks Board for a second one-year term, commencing May 4th, 2022, and ending May 3rd, 2023. Okay, any questions? To the motion, all those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Nesbitt that Council reappoint Dwayne Perkins to the Municipal Planning Commission for a fourth two-year term term. Uh, commencing September 22nd, 2021, and ending September 21st, 2023, and that Fred Rattai be reappointed to the Municipal Planning Commission for a third two-year term, commencing February 7th, 2022, and ending February 6th, 2024. Natasha. Thank you. Through the Chair to Mayor and Council. Um, just to sum up what you just said, Mayor Petrie, um, Dwayne Perkins, a member of the MPC, is seeking reappointment for a fourth two-year term, commencing September 22nd of 21 and ending September 21st of 2023. And Fred Ratai, um, also a member of the MPC, is seeking reappointment for a third two-year term, um, commencing February 7th of 2022 and ending February 6th of 2024. So recommendation is that Council reappoint both Dwayne Perkins um, for and Fred Ratai, Dwayne Perkins for a fourth two-year term, and Fred Ratai to be reappointed for a third two-year term. Any questions? Okay, to the motion. All those in favor, carried. Just want to mention, too, with all the appointments there, just to thank you to the guys that do come forward there because they play such an integral part in uh, uh, how the city of Brooks works, and we need that input from the public all the time, too. So thanks to all those guys that uh, had come forward again, too. Okay, moved by Councillor Prentice that the uh, Works and Utilities Garbage Truck Request for Tender be awarded to Superior North America Limited in the amount of $310,299, excluding GST, to be funded from the Waste Management Reserve. Don? Thank you. Through the Chair, the Mayor, and Council. Uh, the City of Brooks uh, Garbage Truck is due for replacement this year. The replacement vehicle replaces an older garbage truck that will go to auction once the replacement vehicle arrives. The budget for the garbage truck is $380,000. Staff posted a request for tender on Alberta Purchasing Connection on April 1st, 2022, and the city received two proposals as follows. Summit Motors for $354,000, Superior North America for $310,000. Staff evaluated the proposals based on criteria of cost, delivery time, parts supply availability, and warranty. All proposals scored well and Superior North America Limited is the more favorable proposal due to lower price and delivery time. Please note that Works and Utilities currently util utilizes a Libri compactor which is capable of completing the required work of the department. The lowest proposal for the unit is 69000 under the budgeted amount. Funding for the unit is from the Waste Management Reserve. Uh, the recommendation is that the Works and Utilities Garbage Truck request for tender be awarded to Superior North America Limited in the amount of $310,299, excluding GST, 
to be funded from the waste management reserve. Any questions? Okay, to the motion then. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, moved by Councillor Woodrop that Council approve the 2022 Street Improvement Project Revision. Alicia. Thank you through the Chair to Mayor and Council. Um, on September 16th, 2020, the Municipal Planning Commission approved a development permit for a 43 unit apartment building to be located at 104 1 Avenue West, right beside Canada Post downtown. The development requires an extension of the city's storm sewer on the 100 block of Center Street, um, along with two new service connections to the proposed lot. The city street improvement program for 2022 includes the rebuild of Center Street, including sidewalk, curb and gutter where necessary in the one and 200 blocks. At the time of planning the project for the 2022 year, the development permit for the apartment building had expired. However, at the end of March, the developer requested uh, to have the permit extended. The MPC agreed to extend the permit to September of 2022. Um, if the development has still not proceeded at that time, the developer can apply again to have the MPC extend the permit. Since this work will include excavating Center Street, staff has decided to postpone the rebuild of the 100 block of Center Street. The postponed work will leave approximately $160,000 available in the street improvement project budget. Uh, staff has looked at other roadways in the city that do not require con con concrete work but need to be rebuilt. As a result, staff feels that Viner Road would be a good place to put the additional street improvement budget dollars. Staff would, would start at the worst area and rebuild the, the roadway along with ditch improvements until the $160,000 budget is used. Therefore, staff recommends that council approve the change to the 2022 street improvement project. Okay, any questions? Councillor Jessica. So uh, when you're talking about uh, Viner Road, uh, would this happen to extend along that past the old recycling or it doesn't go that far? Thank you through the chair to mayor or to Councillor Jessica. Um, we have, Don and I went out and took a look and you'll see the attachment uh, to the report. We felt that the section, I guess the east-west section, uh, just before the bend was the worst location. So we ha had kind of picked out that as the area to focus on as part of this. Okay. Any other questions? Now with that Center Street project, if that uh, development ever comes to fruition, that would probably come back to the table then to fix that road then, right? That's correct. Actually, I, I did speak with the developer this week um, or last week, and he is looking to start his project in six weeks. Uh, he said that his project manager is putting out tenders for the project, and uh, he was able to secure that mortgage that he was looking at for that development. So oh, okay, um, we would come back to it next year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, to the oh, uh, Councillor Prentice. No, the only question I was going to ask is, is the servicing going to be done, <clears throat> pardon me, on to Center Street as well? Or is that going up First Avenue? So, okay, so we won't be digging that up the second time. That's correct. Sorry, okay. through, <laughs> through the Chair to Council Apprentice. The, the water and sanitary connection come out to First Avenue and not onto Center. So, um, when we did the service replacements on Center, we specifically did not replace those ones down at that end because they're going on to First. Okay, to the motion, all those in favor? Okay, carried, okay, thank you, Alicia. Moved by Councillor Idris that bylaw number 2212 being a bylaw in the city of Brooks in the province of Alberta to impose a special tax for the repaving of streets and lanes be introduced and read a first time. Shelley. Thank you, uh, through the chair to mayor and council. So attached is uh, bylaw 2212 uh, and it's the repaving tax bylaw for 2022. Uh, this bylaw uh, does require, uh, is required to be passed annually according to the MGA um, as it is a, a levying a special tax. The funds received from this special tax are used to repave existing paved streets. As reflected in the 2022 budget, the repaving tax rates have not increased. 
Along with the rates, the bylaw also sets out the manner in which the properties are assessed and regulates how the funds can be spent. It is estimated that the tax will raise revenues of approximately $950,000 in 2022. Uh, so the recommendation is that bylaw 2212 22 be given three readings and adopted. Okay, any questions? I don't think the rate has changed at all in the last number of years. I can't recall a rate increase in that one there too, eh? So yeah, so that's, that's, good. that's good. Okay, uh, to the motion then. All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Nesbitt that bylaw 2212 be read a second time. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Wardrop that bylaw 2212 be given three readings at this uh, meeting. It has to be carried unanimously. All those in favor? And I gather your hands up there, uh, Councillor Idris. Thank you. Carried. <laughs> Uh, moved by Councillor Prentice that bylaw number 2212 being a bylaw of the City of Brooks and the Province of Alberta to impose a special tax for the repaving of streets and lanes be read a third time and adopted. Any questions? All those in favour? Carried. Okay, moved by Councillor Jessica that bylaw 2211 being a bylaw of the City of Brooks and the Province of Alberta to set a rate for the levy of assessed value of property subject to taxation for the year 2022 be introduced and read a first time. Shall we? Thank you. Through the Chair to Mayor and Council. Uh, so pursuant to Section 353 of the Municipal Government Act, Council is required to annually pass a property tax bylaw. Attached is the proposed uh, 2022 property tax bylaw, um, bylaw 2022-11. In this bylaw, uh, assessments uh, and, taxes and tax rates are set for the following taxing authorities. The City of Brooks, which we commonly refer to as the municipal portion, Alberta School Foundation Fund, and Christ the Redeemer School Div Division, um, usually referred to as the education portion, and the Newell Housing Foundation, as well as designated industrial property requisition. Uh, the following is a summary of the taxes required for those uh, above mentioned taxing authorities. So the municipal portion is uh, $12,801,921, and that's uh, the amount that was established in the 2022 budget. The education requisition, is uh, $3,932,195. Newell Housing Foundation, $141,214. And the designated industrial property requisition is $1,983. The total uh, amount of taxes being collected through this bylaw is just over $16,877. $77,000. The total revenue to be collected by the city for the above taxing authorities, um, which I've just gone through, is uh, approximately $536,000 higher than the total amount that was collected through the 2021 taxes. A detailed breakdown is attached, and that illustrates the tax dollars collected for the municipality um, will be increasing by 3.86%, the municipal portion, uh, which again was specified in the budget. Uh, the tax dollars collected for the Alberta School Foundation will increase by 1.05%, and the tax dollars collected to support the Newell Housing Foundation will increase by 15.96%. This proposed bylaw continues to reflect a higher rate of taxation uh, for the municipal portion only, for vacant non-residential properties, which will reduce the tax rate of other non-residential properties, which include the active commercial and industrial businesses that our local economy is so dependent on. The ratio between the non-residential tax rate to the residential tax rate in this bylaw is 1.45 to 1. The city's total taxable assessment increased by just under 16.5 million, and it's made up of a residential increase of 1.57%, a vacant non-residential decrease 
of 2.54% and a other non-residential increase of 0.22%. The total taxable assessment for 2022 is just over 1.3 billion. In 2022, the average residential property will pay approximately $2,538.93 in total property taxes, which is $54.93 higher than what was levied in 2021, and that's based on an assessment of about $224,000. A non-residential property, other than vacant non-residential, will pay approximately $1,636 for every $100,000 of assessment, and that is an increase of $31.43 over the amount that was levied in 2021. The impact on vacant non-residential properties would result in an increase of $31.23 for every $100,000 of, of assessment. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, but the recommendation is that by law, 2211 be given three readings and adopted. Okay, any questions? Um, I just have one um, on residential assessments there. Um, would have my house gone up or down this past year and by how much? I know you can't really tell because, I mean, and it varies through the different parts of the town, but just sort of a general uh, uh, answer for that. <laughs> through the chair to Mayor Petrie, it's gonna be really general. Um, yeah. Typically, the average assess or the the all of the assessments together went up 1.57 percent yeah. in residential, and um, I do imagine that certain areas had a different impact. It, there's also they're also split between land and improvement, so there could have been um, market adjustments for for the the values of those. Um, I certainly don't have any specifics. No, no, and that's exactly what I was looking for, yeah, on the answer on that. Okay, any other questions there? Uh, uh, Councillor Jessica. Well, I'm just looking at the vacant non-residential decrease of 2.54%. So uh, I guess we're trying to make sure we're not penalizing people that have properties that can't be developed because of the economic climate. Um, but down below it says vacant non-residential non properties would result in an increase. Is that because we have a larger number of non-residential properties? Or, like, I would have thought that their per 100,000 assessment would go down if you decrease it by 2.54%. I know math is hard, at least for me. So, um, the the assessments went down on the non res non on the vacant non-residential properties. Um, however, the amount of taxation that's levied to all non-residential properties um, would have gone up. So that makes it so that the property taxes collected have to be spread amongst the assessment that's existing. Um, however, the, it's a, that's a little bit tricky because we do split out vacant and non-vacant. So I can promise you a better answer if you just let me think about it. I can put an email together for you and um, maybe explain things a little bit better. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, to the motion, all those in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Moved by Councilor Good Enough that bylaw 2211 be read a second time. Any questions to the motion? All those in favor? Carried. Moved by Councillor Idris that bylaw 2211 be given three readings at this meeting. Again, it has to be carried unanimously. All those in favor? Carried. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Nesbitt that bylaw 2211 being a bylaw of the City of Brooks and the Province of Alberta to set a rate for the levy on assessed value of property subject to taxation for the year 2022 be read a third time and adopted. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. Okay. Uh, the media, Sandra. Good afternoon all. Uh, for Councillor Prentice, regarding the bids, can you please tell me how many bids there were? 
We had seven seven tenders. I can send you a copy of the of the uh, bids if you want, so you can see for yourself. I'll forward them to you. Thank you. That was my next question. Okay. Thank you. Um, and in regards to uh, Diviner Road, when the money runs out, and I'm assuming it's not going to do the whole road, but the whole road appears to need to be done, will it be continued next year with new money? We'll get Don to answer that. Um, so each year, we bring a report to council for our, for our street improvement um, streets that we, we feel that need to be done. That road is in is in the within the five years, I believe. So next year, when we bring this plan forward to council, we can bring that up, and, it, and it, if that's something that council wishes that to continue on that road, then we can do that. And while you're sitting in the hot seat, Don, I'm sorry, can you please explain to me what's happening on 2nd Street West and Nesbitt Way? Just right down here. Well, we got a water break right there on, in, on uh, 2nd Street West again on that same pipe. Are you talking about the one down on 2nd Street by Davis there? Or? Nesbitt Way is where you work, though, but... It's on both sides of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, okay. Then that's the way must go down. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think the construction is a different utility company on the Nesbitt Way. But the one on Second Street, you're talking about, yeah, and if you want to explain that one there, Don, because we've had issues with that one there too. Is that the one you're talking about across from Davis? And the first, yes, the first one on Second Street West is another water break. Yeah. So I know that there was some discussion earlier, maybe during budget that it was going to be fixed once and for all. And I'm just not sure, excuse me, I'm not sure if that's what's happening now. Yeah, that that project is over $200,000, so we have to we have to put that out on APC to an open tender. So that we're in the process of putting that tender together right now. And that's it. Okay, thank you, thank Sandra. You. Okay, uh, moved by Councilor Good enough that Council close the meeting to the public for agenda item 10A building lease as per section 24 FOIP at uh, 526. All those in favor? Aye. 